So what do I look for when buying dental loops? Should you buy a wireless light? And what is the best magnification for dentistry? In this video, I'm gonna talk about everything you need to know before purchasing your first pair of loops. So whether you're a dental student buying your first pair of loops or a dentist buying your third pair or a surgical resident, some of the things you need to consider are magnification and field of view. The amount of magnification basically determines how zoomed in you are on a certain object. But the drawback is that it eliminates some of the peripheral items like the tongue and cheek if you're in dentistry. So the question then becomes, what magnification should you get? If you're first starting out, I would recommend getting a magnification closer to 2.5 or 3.5. I understand that eventually you're going to level up your magnification as you get more experience as a practitioner, but if you jump into too high magnification early on, your eyes might not be accustomed through looking at the loops and you may get headaches and it can actually negatively affect your work. So my personal recommendation is to start low and graduate onto higher magnifications as you need it. Now there are loops that go upwards of 8x or 10x magnification and that's incredible especially if you're doing detail oriented work like bonding work, like root canal work, things like that. But that can be a problem because at that level of magnification, any movement that you do with your head can cause these vibrations. It can make it so that it's not very clear when you're working. And at that point, why not consider just getting a dental microscope, which is very high powered, it's stable, and you're gonna get a more crystal clear image. Now I've worn different loops from different companies, but currently my workhorse is the Designs for Vision through the lens loops. Now I really like my Designs for Vision loops because the expanded field of view, which allows me to see peripheral items when I'm doing dentistry. And they have the expanded field of view option for a variety of magnifications, which is nice because if you want a high magnification, you don't have to compromise on limiting your field of view, which personally affects the way I do my dentistry. Okay, so what about the level of magnification and why did I decide to move from 3.5x to 4.5x? So I decided to increase my magnification because I decided to get more into biomimetic dentistry, which requires me to better visualize cracks, carry a stent in, and do more detail-oriented work. And do I think it's really necessary to have a very high magnification to do the best dentistry out there? I really don't. I think there's a lot of practitioners out there with maybe not the highest power magnification and they do excellent work. The main thing is you want to find loops that work for you, that allow you to practice dentistry comfortably and allow you to do the best work you can. Now, of course, if you guys are considering getting that elevated magnification, by all means do so, but just remember that it may be a little bit of a challenge for your eyes to get accustomed to that strong lens. So what about the weight of dental loops? The weight is something that you definitely have to consider. The more weight that you put on your head, the more neck pain you can have, the more back pain. Some people that don't have those strong muscles, they're gonna put on a heavy pair of loops and they're not gonna be able to tolerate it. So you have to test out those loops to see whether you can tolerate heavy weight. A lot of these companies can counteract the weight by using lighter weight materials on the frames, by using lighter weight materials for the lens and things like that. A lot of these companies can counteract this weight by having a steep declination angle so that you don't have to tilt your head down while working because the more that your head is tilted down with that heavy weight the more neck pain you're gonna have and the more back pain you're gonna have so for whatever company that you're considering I would definitely just ask the representative what is the lightest weight option out there and they will tell you the options that make the most sense another major consideration is should you get through the lens loops or should you get front lens mounted loops? So through the lens loops are physically attached to the frame and they don't move. It's one rigorous piece. Front lens mounted loops are connected to the frame, but they can be disconnected. The biggest benefit of the through the lens design is that it's all attached as one piece. So if you throw your loops to the side or you're moving it around or whatever, it's less likely for things to come out of alignment and basically ruin the way that you're seeing things while you're doing dentistry. And the biggest negative is that the declination angle maybe can't go as steep as what you would like it to. Now the biggest benefit for the front lens mounted loop is that you're allowed to have a steeper declination angle and you can change out the magnification as you see necessary but the negative is that because there's so many components like I said before if you put it to the side a lot of things can come out of alignment and you may be stumbling trying to get it back to where it needs to be.
be. Personally, I work with the through the lens design, but if there's any dentists out there that work with the front lens mounted design, um, leave it down in the comment section below and share your experiences. Okay, so what happens when you buy your first pair of loops? What's the process like? So if you're considering designs for vision, typically a representative comes out to your office and they take a variety of measurements, including the working length, which represents the distance between your loops and your focal point. If you have a super high working length, typically you're gonna be sitting upright, you're gonna have this long distance between your head and your patient's head, and that does allow for better ergonomics. And if you have a super short working length, then you might have to have your patient chair elevated high so that you can be in focus when you're doing dentistry, or you may have to tilt your head down. So there's this fine point that you need to reach that makes it comfortable for you, that allows you to have proper ergonomics so that you're not hurting your back and your neck, and that representative will talk to you about what that measurement is. Finally, let's talk just a little bit about dental loop lights. So loop lights are incredibly important because you need to be able to illuminate the site you're working on so that you can see clearly, so that you can visualize cracks, or you can visualize a cavity, or whatever it is that you need to do. And currently, you have the option between choosing from corded lights and cordless lights. The corded version is nice because you don't have to charge the battery throughout the day, you don't have to replace the battery, it's a really bright light and it's been around for a long time. But the problem is that sometimes the cords get stuck on a chair or get stuck on a handpiece and you're moving around and you're pulling things away. So corded devices can be a nuance if it's not properly tucked in underneath your lab coat or something like that. Now I recently got the cordless version for my Designs for Vision loops and it's actually really nice because there's no cords to mess around with. The light is really bright and the only nuance is that you do have to change the light every so often so that it doesn't die on you but I've never had a problem of getting up out of my chair while I'm seeing a patient to change the light and to finish the procedure unless I'm doing major restorative work. So it's actually hard to give a recommendation as to whether to get the cordless or the corded version because their benefits and negatives are very similar to each other. So I wanna thank you guys once again for taking the time to watch this video and I hope it gives you some insight before purchasing your next pair of loops. Thank you to Designs for Vision for sponsoring this video and I'll definitely see you guys for the next one. Thanks.